Um, I will start sharing my presentation. Okay, one second. Um, or oh, can you see my screen? Not can yet. Anybody? Not yet. Okay, let me just see. Maybe the. Okay, let me just see. Okay, can you see my screen at this stage? Yes. Yeah, you can see the screen. Okay, one second. Let me just open full view from beginning. Okay, and I'm going to move. I will still see you in some way. Okay. So um, thank you for joining the session and um, thank you for this opportunity afforded to me um, to have a discussion in some lecture um, to your students today. Um, this is a very interesting topic um, related to stress and robotics and how different factors in the world um, could influence not only students, but basically in any working environment, even in our personal life, that um, certain social demographic factors can influence us, um, how I, we handle stress in different ways. And if you look in the picture in front of you, I was just trying to demonstrate because um, uh, students working with robotics have different experiences. Sometimes it's used in an educational manner, for example. Um, maybe they use, um, I've attended before in my life a session where they had a robot called by the name of Pepper um, that was actually teaching the students or the students could um, be uh, working in an environment similar to what you see currently on the screen um, where they built robots actually and uh, find new ways to improve robotics in the world. Um, just a little bit housekeeping before we start. Um, if you have any questions, you are more than um, welcome to ask the questions. You can stop me and we, you can ask the question. If um, It's also good if you can ask it maybe after the session, because I will allow some question at a time. Um, also, um, if something is unclear or you cannot hear me, please um, stop me so that I can make sure that um, um, I can explain either again or I can see what the problem is with the, um, the explanation. Um, any questions at this stage? No? Not yet. Um, all of, okay. And all of you, you do understand English very well? English is not a problem? Yeah, I do. Okay, fine, okay. Um, so before we start, I just want to give a brief introduction about myself. Um, at least that you know to uh, who will be your lecturer for today. Um, I'm currently working as head of quality assurance at a private university, one of the best universities in Azerbaijan, uh, called Western Caspian University. Um, I'm also affiliated with different universities in the UK and UAE. Um, I'm originally from South Africa, Johannesburg, but I've lived many years outside of my own country. Um, I've stayed many years also in the UAE, and I'm currently busy with my PhD in workplace psychology and robotics. Um, I've been working in different research topics recently about um, robotics and stress. Uh, the first one is the stress levels of students and how it could be influenced when working with robotics. Like I've explained just now in the introduction, not only um, uh, in the terms of building robotics or doing research on robotics, but also how we can use it and when we use it and when we teach, because it's possible um, these days to use robotics when we teach as well. And then also look at hospitality staff, but not only hospitality staff, but different working environments, how personality, for example, um, could influence how a person will react um, when working next to a robot. And we, we're talking mostly about stress levels. It could also be seen as anxiety. There's one in the chat line. Um, Yes, thank you for sharing that. Yes, that's correct. If you have questions, just raise your hand. Um, I've published also a few research papers as well as a book chapter related to smart technology. And 
Um, maybe you will ask me, but what is my aim with my studies? What, are, what am I trying to achieve? Um, I really have a passion for people and my aim is with my research studies to create a working environment where, where all of us spend most of our time during the day um, in a less stressful and more enjoyable place to be in, even maybe if your circumstances is not allowing it. Because sometimes we cannot really change the circumstances where we work at. It's not easy always to find a new job, or maybe you really like the environment, but there's still factors that could create more stress for you. Um, I was also thinking just one second, because now it's freezing. Sorry, let me just go back. Okay, the introduction for today to share what you will be learning. You will be introduced to the topic. Um, you will learn why the topic is important. Um, what is stress? Because we also need to understand the term stress. What is personality? Um, higher educational stresses, human robotic interaction, the role of stress in human robotic interaction the role of personality as well as social demographic factors, um, different type of robots because some robots create less stress than other robots, um, some preliminary findings because currently I'm busy with a study in this university um, where we're examining when students work with robotics and what is their response to the stress levels as well as how personality will influence it. And I will give you some conclusions about the preliminary findings and then some recommendations. And if we have time, I will also share maybe a few additional reading material. But before we start, I would really like to know what is your knowledge on this topic? Um, so if you will be so kind, if you can open or click on the website or open the, the um, slido.com, just one second. If, can you click on the link maybe, is it possible? I'm not sure what will be the easiest for you to do. One second. Let me know once you're ready. Did you open the website or clicked on the link already? Excuse me, ma'am. Hello. Um, did you open it? Yeah, you could you please it? post it on the room chat, please? So we can... Okay, okay, yeah. sure, one second. Um, Thank you. Um, okay, so I should... Okay, let me paste the link um, just one second. Let me do it like this. And I will post it for you on the chat line. Okay, now you should be open, able to open it. Is it working for everyone? It might ask for a code. So let me just um, type for you the code. Um, did you open the website? So the code you can enter if it asks for a code. You can enter that code. I've typed it on the presentation as well, and I can also paste it again in the website. Just one second. Can somebody just tell me if you've managed to open it, please? Did you mm -hmm. open it? Yeah. Is it working? Is it working for you? It's just working for joining us. Just for join. There just is a join. no necessary, uh, no, not necessary you for don't? input okay. any code. So, okay, yeah. so then we can start it with. Okay, sure. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Thank you. One second. Um, okay, so you should be able now. 
Um, just one second. Okay, okay, first question. I can see that three of you have joined. So here with the first question, uh, what is a cobot? You choose the best answer that you think what you could relate, what is a cobot? None of you has voted so far. Um, can you please share your vote if possible? Let me just see somebody in the chat line. Okay, one person has voted. This, um, this is not a, um, a competition. It's just to see what is your knowledge about robotics and stress and personality. Um, and I hope then afterwards, when you look then at the questions, your knowledge will be much more. Okay, so three people has registered and has voted. Okay, one second. So the correct answer, you're 100% correct. Next question. Okay. What do you think? Do you think that all humans um, experience stress on a daily basis? Okay, two has voted. One more, there's one person at the, okay, thank you very much. Okay, that's your answer, yes. And we will speak about it a little bit more in the presentation. Um, third question. So cultural background um, is uh, where you live, maybe how you, your family, your status um, related to that. Okay, three people have voted. Okay, next question. So please have a look at the statements and decide which one is describing industry 4.0 the best. Okay, one person has voted, two person has voted. Okay, one more person needs to vote. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that's the correct answer. And I think this is question five. This is the last question. Okay, one person still needs to vote. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and then the, the poll, the results. Okay, there's your results. I hope you can see your results. Okay, thank you very much for participating in this. So um, for the, the, the statements or the questions you didn't know, um, we will discuss it as we move forward with the presentation. So let me introduce you first to the topic and why is it interested and why we should have a concern about this topic. So as we know, the world is moving forward and um, most countries and new technology and advancements is improving human life. I'm sure from your own country, you will tell me that many companies is introducing latest technology. Uh, many um, companies maybe have uh, robots, robotics, or maybe if it's not in your country, definitely around you, or you or you've seen it, but definitely the world is changing. And if we don't pay attention at this very moment, 
what happened to the human being when the world is changing, um, we might experience problems further as time go by. Um, because even if you don't like robots or you don't believe in robots or latest technology, definitely there will come a time when you will have to either interact with a robot or it will become part of your working environment. You're still young, you students. Um, as life go by, I can tell you that you will experience some stage in your life working next to a robot or robots will be part of your team. Or even today, sometimes in some countries, a robots becomes your boss, um, the CEO of the company um, with certain requirements. And digital transformation is a necessity because if we don't change according to the world, what the world is happening, we will stay behind. And if we have a company or even our university, we will stay behind and eventually we will just mean nothing to anybody. Um, if you think about COVID, when COVID-19 happened, um, if I told you in 2018 or 2019, in the middle of 2019, that, um, that the world will be changing in the next few months, that you will not be able to fly around, that you will be locked inside your home, that jobs will be changing, you would not believe me, correct? Because it, 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 it didn't sound like possible at that very stage, but like that happened and it changed the world also digitally, it even changed the world more faster, this will also change the world slowly but surely or very fast, depending on which country you are and what is happening around in your world. Even today, we're not even talking about any longer about Industry 4.0. Um, uh, currently, we are seeing the rise of Industry 5.0, the next phase of digital makeover. So if, if you think about it, maybe in your country, many people were speaking about industry for in the industrial revolution and how it's pushing leaders to transform the existing practices, not only in the business world, but also in higher education and many other places, not only in business and higher education, even in caring for patients, hospital, medical field, the world is changing in this direction. But if we look at countries like Japan, for example, and maybe other countries in Europe as well, the next phase of digitalization is here, Industry 5.0. But we might ask ourselves, but what is the difference between Industry 4.0 and 5.0? And I would just like to give you a very brief um, difference between the two. Industry 4.0 could be described as the use of advanced technology to leverage productivity and efficiency in industries. And different technologies include artificial intelligence, AI, robotics, the Internet of Things, the use of sensors and automation of systems. The difference is that Industry 5.0 directs attention to the human element. So up to now, um, the focus was on, if you also think about lean principles, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term Lean Six Sigma. Anyone of you are so familiar with the term Lean Six Sigma? Anyone wants to try what is the meaning of Lean Six Sigma? <laughs> Please, um, maybe uh, Sandra, I can see Sandra, I can see Rajesh, very Faiz. Um, do you know what is the term, the meaning of lean, lean Six Sigma? Never heard it. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay, so so um, lean is a complete, um, it could be a discussion completely on its own, lean principles, lean Six Sigma. But many companies is using robotics or advanced technology to streamline the business. So what is lean? Lean means that if you have a company, a university, a business, you will try and remove processes that is not necessary in your business. Think about, maybe I can explain it in this way. Think about if you need to get approval from something by the university or by your company, maybe where you're currently working. You have to take it or you have to send it to many people to receive a signature for approval. 
um, maybe five, six people, I'm just making a number up. However, what we do in Lean Six Sigma, we're trying to eliminate all the unnecessary steps. Maybe if you really think about it, you only need two signatures and the rest could be incorporated into one or two. So we're trying to streamline companies so that they will be more efficient um, um, more um, using um, making money instead of spending money because of all this unnecessary processes, unnecessary printing, unnecessary personnel that needs to do different jobs where one person could have been doing one job. And sometimes people are using robotics or latest technology to even create a leaner operation. Um, and there's many reasons for this, which is not actually part of the discussion today. But if you think about it, if you put a robot in somebody's place, for example, where there's a lot of repetitive work, boring work, um, the person will never get sick. Um, the, the work will be consistent. Um, uh, you will not have problems where um, somebody needs to go on lunch or needs a vacation because the work keeps going. Yes, I agree that sometimes robots can malfunction. There might be problems, but definitely you will remove the unnecessary wastage of where, um, first tip, where people work, uh, repetitive work, which is not good for anyone because what is the person learning? And sometimes it's also not good for the mental health and for physical health, and you will improve the efficiency of the company. A very broad, very quick explanation of the term Lean Six Sigma. Um, if you're interested in this, um, you can go and read up a little bit more. There's many research papers, many good books about Lean Six Sigma, Lean Principles, and sometimes also Six Sigma, which is just a little bit more comprehensive than Lean Six Sigma. Any questions up to this stage? Anything you want to ask, what is not clear, um, because I need you to understand why we're looking at the topic of robotics and why people is putting uh, implementing more robotics in the industry. Okay, move on to the next slide. This is just a very broad illustration of what is Industry 5.0. Um, so in the past, like I said, Industry 4.0 is focusing on what can we do for the company, how we can improve the profit of the company, how can we can streamline the company, how can we make the company more efficient. However, Industry 5.0 also adds the human element. They care about humans, the, the personality of the human. Is humans happy when they work next to robotics? Um, how can we improve the well-being of the person? So this is the term, this is the difference, the main difference between industry 4.0 and industry 5.0. Obviously, you can go and read up much more about these two, this two terms. And there's also industry 1.0 up to 5 then. And it's quite interesting to see how we've moved to the, the, the past um, decade, um, decades or a century in the different stages. So I would recommend for you to go and read up a little bit more about this. So why is my topic important, especially the research topic, and why should um, students like you be aware of um, this topic? And how should you apply it? How can you improve it, um, this problem? Maybe in future you're going to work in companies where there's a lot of robotics. So this will help you to work more efficiently, to be more happier in your job, um, and many other uh, benefits that we will discuss as we progress. So despite the technolo technological shift that could offer great opportunities for organizations to improve, research highlights how challenging technological implementation and adoption can be. So all good and well, we streamline companies, we make sure we make pro more profit, but it's not always easy for people to work with the latest technology. If we just speak in very broad terms, many people are resistant to change. They don't want to change. They don't want to accept new technology, um, new methods that could be implemented. 
and many people has really a fear for robotics or latest technology because maybe because of lack of knowledge or they're really afraid of it because maybe of their background or collective memory they've built up through their life. So what if when people work next to robotics is actually more stressed and depressed? And instead of improving the efficiency of the company or make it more profitable, actually now you are sitting with your workers or your students, um, they're actually more depressed. Instead of improving the, the, the quality of education, the students in the university becomes actually more stressed now. What are we doing now? Um, it could be related to maybe to the environment, uh, maybe um, the, the environment where they've been taught in is not what they used to, uh, what they had the whole life. Social demographic factors, I'm not sure if you know what that is. Personality or collective memory. Any one of you can tell me what is social demographic factors. Mm -hmm. What do you understand out of social demographic factors? Sandra, Rajesh, Fivi, or Fais, can you maybe explain to me what you think? What are social demographic factors? May I? May I? I'm sorry. Yes, uh, as sure. per, okay, as per my opinion, it is um characteristic based on like a population. Okay. Characteristic um, of person based on their population. Maybe some Asians that could be different from a Europe people yes. something like this yeah yes yeah. and what else yes culture that's 100 correct what else yes it's mm -hmm. correct yeah i think just it, uh, it might be in their their personality will be built based on the population maybe uh people who can uh like um live with a joint family or with a joint a member they really like to talk and become a like community but uh, people who is um like a self individuality, they are more prefer to work like individual rather than with a work uh teamwork. Yeah, just it. I think like that. Yeah. Okay. It, so what you said was correct. Thank you. Thank you yes. for your contribution. And yeah. anyone else wants to contribute before I will give you a little bit more details? Anyone want else wants to try? Fahes or Sandra? Sandra. Now, okay. So what you said was correct. I agree with you. Um, however, it is also including simple things like your age, for example, um, gender, and um, personality. Already discussed your educational levels, and that could be part of it. Um, what else can be? Um, yeah, basically, what makes you different from the other person? We we are the same but we are different. So age, our age could be different. Um, the gender could be different. Uh, personality, definitely. We're all different in personality. And all of that could contribute to, st to stress factors because not all of us handle stress the same. Let me give you an explanation. Um, you are students in a university um, and many times students are stressed out. It's, it's part of life because you have a lot of um, submission dates that you need to submit on time. There's exam stress. Um, this, it's a new way of life now because you went from school maybe to university. And you find that you are less stressed than your friend next to you. Your circumstances might be the same. You come from the same area, you stay in the same area, you grew up in the same area, your parents is more or less the same, uh, your beliefs is the same, you're going to the same university, same faculty members, instructors, but you find your friend is more stressed than you. And many times this is related to personality, which we're going to discuss. So. Or maybe because your friend is maybe a male and you are a female. Although all the other circumstances stays the same, but maybe stress is more affected. Maybe, for example, males is more stressed than females, for example. In other cases, they say, no, females are more stressed than males. But this, then we need to find out what is the case in this type of research studies. Um, 
Also, um, when you when you are stressed out, it also influences your health, obviously, because students that's more stress have more stress. Um, maybe they have depression. Um, if you have a lot of fear and anxiety, it, it can affect your health in some way. And if we are not paying today attention to what the effect of robotics on humans is, we are going to sit with a lot of problems in future. Um, we should just not implement or use robotics if we don't know what we are facing and how we can help people so that the collaboration between the two will be 100% successful and not only related to the company, the university, or for the benefit of the company or the university. Any questions so far? Anything you want to add, contribute? No? Okay. So I thought before we look at what are the preliminary results of this research study was, I would define a few terms for you so that you will have better understanding. If you also want to do it in your own university, I will tell you some techniques that you can apply to establish certain requirements and how you can find out to help students in these areas. So first we will define the word stress. Like I had a question in the beginning, all of us use the word stress on a daily basis, but it means different things for different people. Um, it could mean it's under different conditions. For example, uh, people experience stress and some people experience stress in a very high manner and it even affects their mood. And if you're always um, in a bad mood, for example, or you're always highly stressed, eventually you will have it will affect your health. You might get um, um, heart problems. You might get um, gastrointestinal problems. And many other problems will start uh, creeping in into your life. And maybe you think, well, I don't have these problems today. But as you get older, you will find that many of these problems was actually generated because of a very stressful life that you led before. Um, stress concerns the individual's physical reaction caused by an overload of responsibilities. So this is according to Sonova and Antosova. And then according to Lazarus and Falkman in 1984, psychological stress is particular relationship between the person and the environment that's appraised by the person as taxing or exceeding. So it means Whatever the person has experienced about his environment, it could be educational related or sometimes even in your own personal life, this is what is causing the stress reaction and this is what is endangering then your well-being. Uh, once again, I would recommend for you, because the time is not enough in the sessions, that you go and read up a little bit more about the different types of stress that you can experience because you also get acute stress and chronic stress um, but time unfortunately doesn't allow for me to discuss this in detail we have to look at personality and um, before we look at personality any questions related to stress maybe you have one to contribute comment ask a question anything you want to ask Yes, no. Okay, then I will move on. So if you go through personalities, there's a whole history behind personality. Um, if you come even from the 18, 1900s, how people saw personality and how they describe personality. However, um, I thought the first important person that is contributing to this research study was Allport. And he defined it as a dynamic organization within the individual of those psychophysical systems that determine the person's characteristics, behavior, and thought. However, according to Weinberg and Gold in 1999, personality could be described as a blend of characteristics that makes a person unique. And according to the American Psychological Association, Personality could be defined as the characteristics and behavior that comprise a person's unique adjustment to life, including major traits, interests, drives, values, self-concepts, abilities, 
and emotional patterns. So we are all different, like I said, and all of us is going to handle stress differently because of our personalities. It's just some brief description what we're really looking at. So my, my, what I like to use normally in personality assessments is the big five, or this also called the ocean um, evaluation. Um, they look at personality traits, either neuroticism, extraversion, openness, agreeableness, and consentiousness. And you can see more or less um, the type of personality. So a person that has very high neuroticism is normally um, depressed. You, I'm sure you have friends that you will tell me they're always semi-depressed. They're always, life is so bad, always a negative view. Um, their emotional liability is quite high and they, they're shameful about everything. They, they don't have confidence and they fearful of everything. They're always stressed out about what will people think about them. They worry a lot and um, they're very low in shamelessness. That's one of the characteristics. An extroversion person on the other side is normally somebody that likes excitement. I'm sure you have friends that's always looking for what is, where is the next party? What can we do next? Um, they're looking for excitement in their life, attention seeking. Um, I know many people that's like that, um, but they're very low in social withdrawal and or to detach them of anything. And in openness, and they normally the magical thinking people. Um, they're not very, they're very low in inflexibility and they're normally open-minded and not close-minded. So they're open for new ideas and properly they will accept, for instance, robotics working together with them in teams much easier than somebody, for example, that has high in neurotism. Um, and in agreeableness, again, is very submissive selfless um so they normally the people that will offer their lives for people that's prepared to go the extra mile for people but they're also very gullible and um, you can tell them anything if if you can convince them about this they will believe you and they're very low in manipulativeness and um, they they're not normally people that will manipulate somebody else to get whatever they need and then you get the conscientious, uh, conscientious people or person. And this is normally the person that's high in perfectionism. They're normally workaholics and they're very low in irresponsibility. So they're very responsible persons. This is the type of student, for example, that will study on a Friday night because next week exams will start. Um, where other, maybe other personalities will say, let's take a break on Friday night. We only study on so Saturday and Sunday, just an example. Um, is this clear for you? Do you understand more or less the different uh, personality traits? You have any questions you would like to ask? Any questions? Then, may any questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, can personality define someone's uh, stress level? Like, um, for, in for instance, someone with high perfectionism and workaholic, they are really tend to do everything in perfect in perfection. So they are very afraid to do mistakes. And how if something I do, it's not really great, or they are too afraid to do a little, little mistakes. So yeah, can personality divine someone's stress levels? That is my question. Um, okay, so, so you want to know um, if personality, sorry, I've, I've missed the last part of your question. I've missed the last part of your question. Okay. Can personality define yes. someone's stress level? Like, uh, for instance, like um, someone with a perfectionist uh, personality. They are tend to afraid to do like uh, little mistakes. They are very eager to do everything imperfect. Everything should be 100% um, uh, great from them. So yeah, that will generate uh, anxiety and fear inside them. So can personality define someone's stress level? 
like how deep yes. the stress level of someone can be uh, defined by their personality yeah correct that my, yes yeah Yes, that, that is 100% correct what you say. Um, mm -hmm. I've completed a study um, recently um, on chefs, um, you know, mm -hmm. cooking staff in kitchens and um, personality. Mm -hmm. And um, the problem is with somebody that's a perfectionist or a workaholic, um, like you said, they want everything perfect. If everything, anything goes wrong, you can imagine in a kitchen, for example, if the mm -hmm. food product is not 100%, their stress levels increase even more. Think about mm -hmm. in a business environment. Um, you know, in a business environment, sometimes it can go really busy. Um, a lot of yeah. things is happening. Even in university, um, students get all these deadlines from different uh, teachers and um, different faculty. And um, because they are perfectionists, they want to do everything 100% correct, their stress levels is keep increasing even more. And mm -hmm. they have fear that they will fail which is also help to increase. And um, if you're a workaholic, um, I'm not sure any of you are familiar with the term, um, but workaholics yeah. normally, sometimes I think I'm a workaholic, but workaholics mm -hmm. normally, uh, you, you, you give very little time for yourself. Mm -hmm. you, yes, you spend true. all your time on, yeah. on, on doing your work perfect. And you, you're very cruel to yourself because you leave only a few minutes a day for yourself yeah, and you we will regret it if we spend time with no without no work we will regret it yeah i do a exactly. lot but it is exactly. in study actually <laughs> in study yeah. yeah yeah so study yeah so you would rather yeah. study then mm -hmm. just to to give your, your mind a break mm -hmm. um, i have some recommendations in the end that, that i will show you but you're 100 mm -hmm. correct so up to mm -hmm. now there's also um, a lady in i think in poland she was doing also some research on stress and personality and robotics and students and definitely based on my preliminary findings my previous research studies her research studies mm -hmm. and there's a few more that personality can determine the stress level of a person um, we need to learn how to deal with it um, mm -hmm. uh, there is ways to to improve your personality but um, the best way is to to find ways to cope in some some manner um, yeah. and if we understand that this is creating stress for us i think i always believe in the sense of if you have knowledge about the problem you mm -hmm. can better handle the problem because then yeah. you can start yeah. reading up do research on your problem and find your own ways how to cope with the stress that you created for yourself like for myself um, mm -hmm. because many times i will just keep working i need to remind mm -hmm. myself you need to be kind to yourself give yourself yeah. a break Spend a few minutes on yourself. It's not only about the working environment or the studying environment. Okay. I, I okay. hope I've answered your question. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, what is possible stresses and higher education? So, I'm going to read through a few of them, but I want you also to think: What will you see is um, stresses in higher education? Um. So. Extensive academic course load, definitely, because it's all new for you. You come out of a school environment and suddenly you have all this academic course load. Everybody, every faculty is telling you my subject is very important. A lot of work, you need to deal with it. A substantial studying, uh, you need to study to pass. I know there's many ways that you can find to get the degree sometimes, but if you really want to know anything in life, you need to study because you need to gain the knowledge to apply it one day in the business world. Time management is one problem. Um, we never learned it maybe in school because previously it was not part of subjects in school or never, never ever anybody trained you how to manage your time. And suddenly you arrive in university and you have all these deadlines and responsibilities and they want you to join student unions and be active in sports and be in debates and you don't know how to manage your time and suddenly it creates more stress in you. Financial concerns, um, if you're paying yourself for your studies or your parents is paying, um, it might be a worry in the background for you because maybe you think, how should I ever repay the studies? Um, maybe you're working to try and repay your studies, which is also additional stress because working and studying is not always easy. Maybe family health pressures, uh, maybe your family home is not stable maybe you have problems at home maybe 
you're already married and you have also family responsibilities that you need to address. Um, and then adapting to a new vi environment. Um, when you come from school and you go to university, it's completely different because in your home, maybe you're protected. Your parents think for you, they protect you, they guide you all the time. And then suddenly students arrive at university completely on their own. And now you have to work it out for yourself. You need to think about life. How are you going to spend your money? Um, how will I manage my day? What should I say no to? What should I accept? Um, so I want to know from all of you which stresses you can add. What is your stresses currently in the university? Um, maybe that I didn't mention here, or maybe you can just give me a little bit more details if it's mentioned here. So I will start with, let me just see the names, because now I can not see the names. Sorry, let me just go back to the previous slide. Go back. Okay, let's start with um, anyone, because I cannot see the names. Please, anyone. What, what is a high stressor in the university for you? Or in your university life? Anyone wants to start? Or just mention something? Yes? Anyone? Do you get enough sleep in university? That could also be a possible stressor. Anyone wants to mention anything? Anything? Let me try. Fires, um, Sandra, Rajesh Veri. What do you think? What are stresses in higher education? Any examples? Novita, Novita, okay, Novita, Sandra. What do you think of stresses? Anything. What are stresses in your university currently? What is making your head turn every morning? <laughs> what is your worry currently? Why? What is creating a lot of problems for you at the moment? Well, may I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. I, okay. Yes. Okay. For me, actually, I have no stressor in my current university because work, because I love study. But the most important, I I have a stress because I always feel that I am lack of more knowledge. So yeah, that is that is my main problem that I would like to. Um, learn more, learn more, and I think that I didn't get it enough. So that <laughs> makes me, yeah. So that makes me more stressed whenever. Okay, that whenever I attend a class, okay, I didn't get that much knowledge which I expect. So oh, why I should, yeah, some things um in my mind always trigger me. That makes me like. Oh God, I don't really want to study like a cook that cook me mechanism. I didn't get it in positive way, so I tend to uh, away from the class. But inside me, I'm hunger of knowledge. I'm hungry of knowledge. So yeah, because of that, my coping mechanism is not working in positive way. But my main stress, if I can mention, I didn't get much knowledge. With which I expect, and that is my main stress in uh, college environment. Yeah, that is my okay. I, yeah. I I can I can associate <laughs> with that yeah. because Thank I always you. believe when I learn enough, is my life long enough yeah. to learn yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, which that is not is... always bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you mom thank you yeah. thank you for sharing okay somebody mm -hmm. else anybody else wants to share novita novita maybe you can share with us what is your stresses yes um i cannot see your name a uh, set your buddy um yes please share what would you like to say you may speak hello you may speak yes hello can yeah, can you hear my voice? 
Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Bonda, for sharing today. Uh, I just want uh, to just give a suggestion about possible stressor. In my experience in the class, uh, there are many students uh, have problems in le learning management system because ah, okay. we sometimes we use uh, technology using website so we have many assignment and from from learning manage, management system and sometimes we use uh, asynchronous and synchronous uh, yes. so we have many assignment uh, the the possible stressor for student in higher education i mean uh, uh, mostly in 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 my experience is about learning management system because okay. this is this is a uh, many many possible stressor maybe about maybe about a website maybe about system quality maybe about information quality something like that there, okay. there, are, there are many there are many information quality they don't know because uh, 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 we, we, we can we, sometimes we, we, we give uh, some some uh, procedure or something became uh, announcement something like that but not all of stud, uh, teacher give the give them something like that so okay. they don't know about information quality it is it is it is uh, related with service quality right is this yes. service quality right so yeah. if you don't have you don't have high high service quality i mean they don't satisfied and then after if they don't satisfy of course, the student will not trust of us as a lecturer. Yeah. Just because. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> okay. I think, you know, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I think, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And because I, I, I'm so eager to, to agree with you in the sense that I agree with you that um, I think if what I can identify in this case is um, um, so learning management systems is also um, automation, correct? It's also digitalization. It's to do with the latest um, change of technology. And I think the problem normally, what I've identified so much in students so far, and even in other working environments, is the lack of knowledge related to the technology. So if the person doesn't understand how the, 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 the learning management system or the latest robotic or the latest automation is working, it's really stressful for a person. You can take it for myself. If I take it for myself, I'm really anxious when I don't understand how something is working. Um, and it creates more stress. And this is also yeah. why that um, when we teach, um, when, when students work with robotics, that they should have, the, the teacher or the faculty should inform them about the robotics so that they feel confident um, either if the, the robotic is part of the class, the teaching effort, or if they learn how to build robotics or how to analyze robotics, but um, they should have knowledge because less knowledge just increase the stress levels. And you, you know it for yourself. Maybe you can remember when you brought the mobile phone to your grandfather. Um, it's very stressful because he doesn't know how to work. He doesn't want the new technology mm. because he doesn't understand um, the technology, which yeah. is perfectly normal because even for us and for younger people like you, it's still a very stressful if you don't understand how it's working. So yeah. I agree. It's a, it's a big stress contributor to that. Agreed. Thank you for your contribution. Bye. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, so we'll move on then. Um, so the next one, sorry, let me just find a way. Sometimes it's stuck on the one slide. Okay, so we also need to understand. So I went through the different terms, personality, stress, and, and um, the different robotics, but we need to understand what is human robotic interaction. And some people will call it human machine teaming. Um, you also will hear that uh, coin um, human robotic uh, 
collaboration. So the term many times is intertwined and different researchers, different research studies, you will see they use the terms um, in different ways. However, um, let me explain to you. So human robotic interaction is a field of study dedicated to understanding, designing and evaluating robotic systems for the use by or with humans. Um, is when people look at what happened when people work or students or workers or even in caregiving, uh, maybe in medical field or in old age homes, um, they use robotics for this purpose. And it depends how people react to robo uh, the robotics. What I can also say that we're going to see soon is that different type of robotics have different responses to, to people. But just for you to understand the term human robotic interaction. It's the study of how people behave and their attitude toward robots and if it's acceptable or not. I would once again for you recommend that you go and read up a little bit more and there's very interesting um, reading material, also some research material, um, maybe even in your own language it will help you to understand even the term a little bit better. So the role of stress in human robotic interaction, this is the abbreviation for that. The fear of making mistakes was associated with higher anxiety levels. Um, like we said before, if you remember when we were discussing um, personality, conscientious people is normally, they have the fear of making mistakes. Um, and it's associated with higher anxiety levels. So imagine I'm a student with um, a conscientious personality, you're putting me next to a robot. I don't have really about a lot of knowledge about the robot because maybe it's in the beginning. I only started now my first year. So my stress levels could even be higher. I'm already a stressed person because I always try to be perfect um, and work everything to the, the everything in time. Um, meet all the deadlines and now you're putting me next to a robot immediately i feel more stressed because i don't understand the robotics um it's creating anxiety it's raising my stress levels even further and many people many research has proven that in different research studies i've mentioned a few for you here but you can also go and read up a little bit more about it and then also um when you get stressful anxiety um you, you, you become more stressful, but also it will affect your health and your job satisfaction, or maybe your academic outcome could be um, uh, affected because stressed people, you will study less. Uh, maybe it's difficult to study when you're really stressed out um, and um, it will influence your academic progress maybe because it's not then only related to the robotic uh, courses, it could influence all the courses because a, a stressed a student um, obviously see everything differently and life becomes really difficult. So we need to find solutions to help students um, so that everybody and that we can deal with all sorts of personality. So why are some students more stressed than others even in most of the circumstances are the same? I've explained this to you before that even if everything is the same, environment is the same, it comes back to personality and some social demographic factors, uh, gender. Um, in other work areas and um, working environments, we can definitely do studies um, easily on age, but sometimes in education, uh, many students is in the age group between 18 and 30 years old. So the study becomes a little bit more difficult, but I must also tell you that these days, older people are also enrolling as students. So um, it would be quite interesting to also see if age, maybe an older students would have the same stress effect when they work next to a robot, um, not only the personality. The role of gender and human robotic interaction based also on previous studies, um, as I said, I'm busy currently with a study in my own university related to this. Um, gender differences of communication and relationship conflict with colleagues, organizational culture and role overload have a direct impact on male flight attendants job stress. So this was a study done uh, among flight attendants and they found in this particular study that 
a male flight attendance was more stressful. So you might think, but why is it related to this study? What I'm trying to show you is that sometimes gender could also have an effect on your stress levels. However, in another study, um, it showed that compared with females, they had to gain more stress because of the imbalance in work life. And in another study conducted in the Le Mans hospitality industry, um, it shows that female employees were far more stressed than their male counterparts. The highest contributors to the stress levels were role conflict, role ambiguity, and excessive workload. So if we look at previous studies, not only related to students and stress and robotics, um, it seems that um, overload, it could be job uh, work overload, uh, excessive work um, job stress could influence the stress levels further. When we bring it back to students, uh, students have a lot of work to do. You have to write a lot of um, papers, you have to um, follow the instructions from the teacher, they expect you to contribute in studies, um, they ask you to write essays, pre uh, prepare presentations, and everybody believes that their subject is the most important. So that could also be related then to an overload in, um, in work. The workload could be high. Um, personality, like we've discussed, just an interesting study um, that uh, on employees, not related to, um, to students really, um, in Canada showed that three of the five personality traits, I've shown you the big five before, uh, was significant correlation with stress. Extraversion, conscientiousness showed negative relationship with stress, whereas neuroticism was positively associated with stress. And similar findings were conducted at the University of Malaysia, but this was related to the academic administrators, not so much the students. And it shows that the significant relationship between personalities with work-related stress. And according to Lazarus and Falkman, which is very uh, popular for his stress theory, certain personality types, for example, neuroticism, and those with a tendency to depression are likely to react intensely to stress. And according to Ledger et al., People high in neuroticism tend to view everyday stresses as more threatening than people low in neuroticism. So we were looking at the stresses in education. So imagine I have a high neuroticism. So even for me, the, 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 the problems will look even bigger. The deadlines will seem even tighter. The, the, the way how the teacher is teaching will be maybe able to understand less all of that will seem even bigger the problem. And that will create a lot of stress in me. And imagine you put me next to a robot now and you expect me um, to, to learn or to work or to be taught by a robot like I've seen before. And also not only personality, social demographic factors, um, working environment, university environment could lead to stress. They've also proven before by um, research studies that types of robots could also increase your stress levels. Um, the different type of robots that you get, I'm sure some of you are already familiar with them, is autonomous mobile robots. Autonomous mobile need limit, limited human interaction, just to uh, give you the description for that. Hybrids or sometimes hybrids because uh, hybrid plus robots. And also, uh, many times, like some of these robots is used in ghost kitchens. Collaborative robots is also types of robots with human, either as an assistant, task, or process as a guide. I have some pictures for you because I believe that pictures will describe the robots much better than just reading from the screen. So these days, humanoid robots, like you see on the top right, um, I've seen recently, in the fact, in the last week, a video where they were building robots exactly like the person. They were even mimicking the, the, the facial expressions, how the person is responding to answers, and everything was exactly the same. And this is some picture of a robot that I actually saw a year or two back in a UAE. Um, and when the robot speaks, you, it, it seems like if it's the person speaking. And then also recently, 
They've built this one, and this is a little bit older, uh, created Jaja. Um, maybe in your country you have similar robots like this, but so that you can understand what is the meaning of humanoid robots. So they normally very um, similar to humans, and they try to build in as much um, um, characteristics of humans into these robots. So university students could be part of this project. So you can imagine if they work with this humanoid robots, it has a different stress level than, for example, uh, building um, cage robots, which is more related to the past, where robots was not safe to work next to a human, and they used to pay, put them in cages. However, some industrial robots are still put in cages, but there will be a, a difference in stress between cage robots and building humanoid robots, for example. Um, collaborative robots um, on the left, you can see it's robots these days is very popular in many industries. Um, it can work right next to a human. Um, you can teach actually the, the collaborative robot to do certain tasks. And um, once you train the robot, it will follow your um, steps. And then also Pepper, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Pepper. Uh, many countries is using this for different options. Um, to meet people when they enter the door. Um, I've actually attended the lesson of Pepper in 2020 at the Expo in the UAE, where Pepper was actually giving a lesson to robotic experts about robotics. And it was very interesting how it was reacting. But the reason why I'm showing you these pictures so that you can understand that different types of robots will create different levels of stress. So if you are a student and you're building robots, once again, except for your personality, your age, your gender, that could play a role. Also the type of robot that you're dealing with, that you have interaction with, could also determine how stressful, um, how your stress levels will be. Um, there's some research studies um, that you can read up. It says previously related to type of robots, standalone industrial robots confined in production cells, indicated that appearance and motion of the robot can contribute to stress levels of the operator. So it's not only about the look of the robot or um, the, the how close you get to the robot, but also the, the noise. And um, sometimes robots can make a noise, the whoosh sound when it's moving that could also create stress in a person or fear or anxiety. If you are a student busy building robots um, and you're busy working on this, maybe the unfamiliarity, um, the first time you interact with this could also be when the robot moves, when it's making some noises, um, the distance from the robot, all of that can contribute to even more studies. And like I said before, you can have a look also at studies from Pollock, Cop, and Fascio um, to read up a little bit more about this topic. And um, when we look at the research question, what I was trying to find out for students and robotics, uh, based on everything that I've told you now on top, um, previous research studies related to human robotic interaction and stress I wanted to find out if student stress levels could be affected by human robotic collaboration, and if so, whether there were specific vulnerable groups by gender, age, and personality. So I wanted to see um, if we could identify maybe students based on the gender and age, also personality, and to find ways to make it more acceptable for them to work with robotics or to get training by robotics or even the latest technology that was mentioned by one of you about the learning uh, management systems, which is, could also be stressful because it's not so working. So if we understand how we should be, um, treat students and uh, manage students in this way, it will become better for them. It will create an environment where they will actually learn something and will not only be stressful all the time, because if a person is stressed for all the time, you tend to not learn really anything. Um, before I go to the next slide, any questions, anything you want to mention, you want to ask me, please feel free to do it. Let me just see in the chat line. No. Okay, anything you want to ask me, anything you want to mention?
Yes. <laughs> Anyone wants to? Okay. Yes, Sam. Please go ahead. Yes. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Okay. Can you hear my my yeah. voice clearly? Yes, I can. Yes, okay. I can hear you. Okay, thank you. And let me introduce myself first. Uh, I'm from, uh, my name is Sam and I'm from Stockholm University and I'm uh, having a fourth semester right now. So uh, here I have a question that I want to ask. And this is my question. Uh, do you think that to get success, a person must experience stress in his life words that's my question for you uh, and you you can so just... okay sorry um, i can yeah. hear the, i i could not hear the whole question i hear that you, you asked me do i think that the person should do something first but i could not hear exactly what you were saying can you just repeat your question yeah wait uh do you think that to get success or success a person must experience stress in his life first. That, is it clear? <laughs> okay, a person must express uh, experience something first, but I cannot get a word. Is it um, stress first? Are you talking, uh, is this the question? To get when, familiar uh, with something uh, that you may should May I explain? help you to understand? Yes. It? I yes, think I got please. it. Okay, I think what uh, Sam trying to convey is, is uh, is it true that if someone will be successful if they are experiencing something like stress in their life so it can define them as a successful person um, in order no. to success <laughs> yeah in order to success someone needs okay. to experience uh, something like a stress in their life that is okay. i think I... Uh, the questions am i right Sam? Okay. Yes, okay, uh, I think I have okay. Okay, yeah. thank you for the clarification. You, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, a very good question, but um, so we have to look at it two ways. Firstly, no, you shouldn't have severe stress for only to reach to be successful in life. Okay. But what happened mm. in life is I talk from my own experience, and you're still young, and I'm sure some of you will go more or less the same route. When you're young, your knowledge about certain items, certain things that you want to do, even if you want to open a business, um, if you work in a new working environment, um, getting married, um, life is stressful, especially in the life we're living today, okay? But if we can uh -huh. learn at a very early age how to manage stress, okay? Because think about uh -huh. it. You might not have a business to run. You, you might not be a student which have a stressful life. You might not have a stressful life at all. Maybe you are really lucky to have really not a stressful life. But there is elements today in the world we are living today which create stress. I think the key to this answer is, no, you don't need stress to be successful. But if we can learn to manage stress, daily stress, remember the beginning uh -huh. I said daily stresses, um, we will actually, I think, personally be more successful if we learn to manage our stress. And one of the techniques that I've um, learned uh, through different research studies so far and by personal experience, for example, if you learn emotional intelligence, for example, how to handle when people is not treating you correctly, when you fail, when you many things happen with you. If you know how to handle disappointment, um, you will spend less time on worrying what go wrong and concentrate more on what did go well in your progress, in your business, in your studies. And I think in this way, you will either learn more because stressful, any stressful person is not always successful. Why? Um, not in long term. I'm not talking long term. But imagine if I'm very stressed today, I will not really learn anything because stress is it's, it's stopping me from that. So if you learn to manage it, I think actually you could be more successful. Um, it's a very broad topic you ask me, but I hope I've given you some ideas. The answer is no. Um, it's not to say you must have stress to be successful, but if you can learn to manage the stress in the world we are living today, even if you have no other stress factors, 
I think you would be even more successful because you will start concentrating <laughs> on, on important things, not only worry about uh, things that could stress you out. Okay. Is it clear okay. I'm confusing you? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, thank you for, for your answer. And okay. I have a last question. And sure. this is my question. Uh, is there any tips and trick or is there any solution uh, to to avoid a stress in our life so we can uh, get, uh, get a normal life and happy life without an emotional or stress to do anything else like that? That's all. <laughs> I, I, I wish we could have a stressful life, but no. But at the end, um, almost when I finish, I will give you some tips that you can um, try, um, uh, what you should pay attention to. It will not take away stressful events because life happens, but at least if you can manage it in some way, it will have less of an effect on you. I will, at the end, I have some a few um, ideas and suggestions that will help you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you, Miss Wanda, for the answer. Okay. Well, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. One second. Thank you so we much. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then the next one. So, research studies related to stress, uh, people, working environment, university life. Um, in the past, if you look at Lazarus and Falkman, which maybe is not important for you at this stage because we, we're really trying to improve the well-being of students, but um, in the past, um, people thought that stress that you built up in your environment, plus maybe the robotic, for example, could create the stress. But not always was the, the factors that you come with to the university. So in the university, you experience stress because of education, because of the interaction of robotic, because of that. But what if your, your home life, your personal life at home is not really going good? It's already a stressful environment. What if you had a, um, maybe you, you stay in an area which is really dangerous, where safety is not a priority in the street. Um, that's also stress creators. And you come already with that stress to the university. Um, or maybe sometimes people even stay in war torn areas where there's war maybe. You already bring all that stress to the university. Now I'm going to tell you your personality is creating more stress. And I'm going to tell you that the robotic you're going to interact with in the class is going even to create more stress. So according to Fuhat, he believes that it's a tri-transactional theory of stress, meaning that it's stress generated when the student encounters a stimulus like a robot, not only on the stress intensity generated by the robot, but always also on the previous state of stress due to lack of time management, for example, and what you bring from outside. Maybe you have a collective memory. You had a lot of bad things happening in your life. Generally, you are a stressed person because your life was not always good. But um, according to the, this uh, person, Fuad, he believes that stress is created by all three of these elements and that we should not only pay attention to one thing, but also pay attention to other things. Maybe some of them you cannot change. You cannot change your childhood. You cannot change maybe your family life. It's not possible. But if we are aware of this, we can find ways to cope with it and to move forward in a way. Knowledge is good. If we understand ourselves and know why we're stressful, we can make plans to eliminate, to reduce stress. Yes, I can see, Rajesh Veti, you want to say something. Anything you want to mention? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so from the current study I'm busy looking at, preliminary findings, because the study is still running and I've collected more data last week, and um, it seems that, um, yes, Sam, please feel free to ask question. Yes, Sam? You want to ask questions, Sam? Okay. 
So not only is the interaction with the robot creating stress, but it seems like the longer the students get used to the robot, the more they work in the environment of the robot, building the robot or getting taught by the robot, the, it seems like the stress levels of the student is reduced. Also, previous research studies have indicated that conscientious and neuroticism are positive predictors of stress, like we've discussed that the more um, perfect you want to be, the, the more workaholic you are, um, the more stressed you will be. Um, extraversion is a negative predictor, but since neuroticism is related to negative emotionality, it often causes persons to experience negative emotions, which tend to linger for a long time. If you fall, fall in this category of personality, um, you will probably find that Life is always, if you know the term of half full or half uh, full or half empty the glass, you're probably in the area of always half empty because you see life through a different way. You look differently at life. Life, you see negative maybe. Um, you can see what's happening in life and you're not always positive about it. Um, such students um, evaluate the situation as loss of threat and do not appreciate their own resources for coping with stress. Many times these type of students, workers, um, not only students, they don't really believe that there's anything that could help them for stress. And they believe that th this is the only way, this is how they've been born, this is how they've been made, and they only uh, follow this. I just want to see in the chat line is... No problem. <laughs> okay. Also, um, coping may result from getting more. So one of the techniques that is not really a technique, but the more you interact with the robot, the more your knowledge is um, improving. The same with the learning management system. The more you learn about it, the more you get confidence about it, the less the stress you will have. Because once you're confident, mm -hmm. it will not have the same impact on your stress levels that in the beginning when you started off with this. The same when you learn about robotics or when a robot is teaching you. Maybe in the first few lessons, it will be really stressful for you. You will have very high stress levels. But as time goes by, you get used to the robot. You learn more about how the robot is built, how you to put it together, and your stress levels will be reduced. Also, it seems that student females are less stressed when working with robotics, but unfortunately my sample size is not big enough um, to definitely agree that this is the case. Um, I'm planning to do a little bit more studies on that and um, to see if it's working. And in age, which in many cases in robotic relationships, could play um, a role in the stress levels. Um, previously, I found out that all the males is more stressed than younger males when working in collaboration with robots. Um, but in this case study, because it's students, and like I mentioned in the beginning, students is normally between the age of 18 and 30. And in specific in this university, I could not do a proper study to find out if age would also contribute to the stress levels. Um, the next one, sorry, sometimes it gets stuck. Um, just one second. Okay. So what can we as teaching staff do to assist students? And maybe some also to answer your question. Firstly, if you are a teacher, a faculty, I would really highly recommend that in the beginning of the year, you should try and determine what is the personality types of your students. Um, it's not difficult to do it. You can use um, online questionnaires um, like the BFI 44, BFI 20, and you can ask your students to complete it and you can determine mostly, um, definitely, which is the different personality types of students. Also to assess a class to see which personality types is the highest in your particular class. Um, for example, um, you might ask me, but why would I like to do that? Um, well, firstly, there was one observation made and with personality in students, and it showed that conscientious students are likely to attend classes where the personality of extroverts or extroversion often have a higher degree of absence. So 
other personalities may give you different results, but this is the two differences between class attendance and no class attendance. Um, a very good idea also if you are a teacher or maybe your students today, um, you can ask your, your faculty, your teacher, your instructor to explain a little bit more about robotics, even if the robotic is teaching you or you work with technology so that you can um, have more knowledge, which will reduce your stress levels and you will learn how to cope with it. Remember what I said in the beginning, knowledge is power. The more you learn about robotics, the more you understand the working of the robotic, it will help you to help the students to reduce the stress levels. And then teach them emotional intelligence. If your, if your faculty is not teaching you this, there's many good books that you can read up about. Um, Daniel Goldman, if you're interested, I can type the name for you in the chat box. Um, if you read about emotional intelligence, it will help you not only in the situation of robotic and personality, but also in future, even in a working environment, how to be emotionally intelligent. Because most of us never had experienced emotional intelligence. And once we learn how to be emotionally intelligent, it will help you to reduce your stress levels in all areas of your life, not only at university, but also at your private life, in future and working life, and as life go, carries on. And then another point that I thought is really important for teachers or faculty is the fact that if teachers, faculty, or instructors understand the learning style of each student, um, because we all learn different. If I ask all of you how you learn, some of you will tell me I lie in my bed and study. Some of you will tell I'm listening to videos, watching videos. Some of you will tell I'm building things to figure out the, the concepts and what I'm learning. If teachers and faculty could understand the learning styles of students, they could improve the learning ability of the student and ultimately the academic success. And learning styles is associated also with stress levels. So if the, the teacher is teaching the wrong way, the learning style is not correct um, to the student, the student will become more stressful. Once again, you place him in a, in a, next to a robot or you let the robot teach the student and the stress levels becomes even higher. So it's a very good practice for anybody that's teaching and maybe your students now, you can ask your student, can we analyze our learning styles? Um, and it's very easy to do it. There's a VARC model that you can download from the internet um, that will help you to analyze the different student learning styles. And then developing context control and effective support linked to personality can bolster student resilience. For example, um, if you offer effective support to students, um, uh, make sure that you have a well-being center in, in the uh, um, the university. Um, if you are a, maybe a student union leader or you work in student union, uh, care about the students, pay attention. Um, if you see that maybe there's some signs of um, stress, um, ask questions, be informative what is happening, how do they experience the interaction with the robotic and talk about it, support each other about it. Um, from the pre, from the studies, okay, before I look at the, the questions that maybe arise from this research study up to now, is it clear for everyone to understand that um, how we can uh, reduce stress? Um, stress in our lives will never be reduced 100%. But if we learn how to manage stress, time management, emotional intelligence, if we know as a faculty um, our learning styles, how to um, operate the personalities, what personalities is more stressful than other personalities, definitely we can reduce the stress levels of students. Any questions related to this? Anything you want to mention? Anything you want to mention? Any comments? Um, Sam, is, was it clear for you maybe the ideas? Um, how you can reduce stress. Um, anything you want to mention? Yes. 
Anything you want to mention, say? Yes, uh, Satya Budi. Yes, sorry, I cannot, uh, I'm sure you are pronouncing your name completely wrong. Can you please, um, yes, ask the question, yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I just want to make, uh, I just want to give a comment. I mean, I, I want to uh, to share my experience with my student, especially uh, in connected with your topics. Uh, how about the level of student stress in, in higher education? Uh, yes. Recently, we have uh, many uh many uh, application that we use uh, something like uh uh the it.com this is uh, yes. something like uh can be uh, can be a, a robot tutor something like that to robot tutor so we can just type the topics with okay. in, in indonesia in Indonesia, in Bahasa, and then okay. we can translate. We, we can choose uh, as female or male, and then we upload our our picture, and then okay. the picture will be uh, as as a as a robot, and okay. it can be it can be a, a tutor. So okay, uh, my 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 picture uh, will replace me. <laughs> And okay in in explain the the chapter topics in, yes. in that uh, the chapter topic and it, it's about 10 minutes and then after i give to I, I i upload to my learning management system and then they can watch uh, uh, at glance about the the chapter at glance and then after after that I give uh, something like uh, assignment. Uh, it, I have uh, something like case study, and then I give to my student. But okay. the student never, never stress for that. Never <laughs> think stress because if I give a assignment, something like for for uh, they they must make a resum on conclusion about. Uh, the study they use a uh, application something like okay. resumer resumer.com it is uh, okay it is very easy just just uh, uh two minutes to to resum what what, what i have uh, give to her about uh, the study but it, because in english so resumer can can choose the, the language uh, English to Indonesia to Bahasa, so it is okay. very simple, very okay. just not more than one two minutes, so they can okay. they can answer my assignment. So I think uh, there are no there are no stress for them because there are many application AI, AI application that will help them. To okay. make to, to answer so, uh, the, <laughs> so, the assignment. So, so, so what what will be really interesting um, if you can um, you can assess the stress. There's a PSS ten um, stress evaluation. Um, it's only ten questions. Okay, so maybe do the the stress evaluation um, uh, before they interact with this application, and then maybe during the application, maybe just quickly ask them to ask the questions, and also afterwards, and try and compare. Because even if you tell me now it's easy, it's not stressful for people. I can tell you, <laughs> it's it's from the outside. This is what you see, but. Um, if the personality is a stressful personality, that person will definitely experience more stress. Maybe not visible um, on the face, but once you start to measure the levels, you will find out that actually that person is more stressful. It could be for different reasons. 
Um, maybe you think everybody understands it. Um, also, if you can discover for which ones it's easier or more difficult, even if it looks simple for you, um, you can even enhance their learning experience um, or maybe even get better academic results out of them because if you understand which students needs a little bit more attention um, in this particular area, it will help you. It will improve your academic success with your students. Many times we make the mistake. We look at students and say, it's easy. They, they can all do it. <laughs> but you don't know what's going inside. You see, what is the, the stress levels inside? What is happening? Well, they're busy applying this. Yeah. And so, this topic is very interesting. And this is the new, the new topics. I think this is awesome <laughs> topics. And yeah, uh, there are many... Uh, uh, Recent research gap. Uh, as as I know by your presentation, uh, uh, level stress of student, uh, maybe from internal aspect, from internal something yeah. like time management, something like many assignment. But we we talk about uh, in this present your presentation. We talk about uh, level stress of student in higher education. I mean. I mean, in, it's about uh, application, about uh, website, something mm. like that. Not not internally, not internally aspect from the student, but but uh, externally, especially in 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 religion, communication using exactly. using technology, yeah. <laughs> using technology. <But> right? <laughs> there's so, there's so many aspects we can look at. Um, even if you look at and um, what I was reading up recently, um, the level of education, uh, you would find um, if I do research studies not only related to students, but I go outside in workplaces, you will find that the, the people that have less education is more stressful than people with higher education, not related to robotics. It's not to say that the person knows anything about robotics, but even that because the, the education level is higher, it makes the person less stressful. However, if the person is then older and it's a male, then maybe the stress level is then higher again. So there's so many aspects that can influence it. But I guess in, in um, students um, and universities, we try to prepare students so that they become the best at the workplace where they go and that they will have a happy life. For me, it's important that people have a happy life. You have to work. Most people have to work um, and that you can manage life happenings. Uh, life happens. Like I said in the beginning, COVID happened. We never knew this is what everybody will go through. But if we know how to manage it, if we can teach students to handle all the situations in spite of age, gender, education, um, new technology, but if they have some toolkit to take out when something like this happens, it will make them better employees and they will be able to handle any difficulty and um, it will help them to be more successful in their career. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Ma'am, ma can can uh, may I have uh, your email email address? Sure. I, I will something, get my email. I, maybe yeah, someday sure we can discuss. Yeah, sure. It's it's really okay, interesting. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm typing Perfect. it in the uh, just one second. Anybody else has questions or want to mention something because it's very interesting. Um, what you mentioned. Um, okay. There's my email ID. Um, I hope you can see it all. I've uh, typed it in the chat line. Um, let me just see. Um, okay, one. So um, looking at conclusions, and um, please you are welcome to mention or anything that, uh, but it seems that um, human robotic interaction in general um, will increase stress levels of students. Um, and like I said, it's not only related to robotics, it could be uh, like automation, a new learning management system that was mentioned in the beginning by someone, um, but new technology could increase the stress levels of students. Obviously robots, if they become more humanoid, suddenly it's this person that you know start talking to you, but it's not this person. Obviously your stress levels will become more higher. If we think about Uncanny Valley Theory by Professor Mori in the 70s, 
um, where he was saying that people have a certain area where they will become more stressful. And once they get used to it, um, the stress levels will go down. Um, it seems that gender could also play a role. Um, other studies that I've completed already has proven that, but unfortunately, uh, my sample size in this particular study is not enough yet to definitely confirm that female students and male students, the difference between them. But based on other studies, it seems like there could be a difference. And in age, the same, like I said, many older students these days enroll at universities. Unfortunately, in my university, no, we don't have all this, <laughs> so much older um, students, but it will be interesting also to look at it. Um, there's two hands I can see, um, Adi and uh, again Satya Budi. So maybe Adi first and then back to Satya Budi. Adi, Adi, yes, please. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, maybe it's a little bit uh, outside this topic, but uh, I want to ask if there's any research uh, that in first of this topic. So how... Uh, how the level of stress of students who use robotic and then didn't use any robotic. For example, just like now we have a really dependency on the on our Android mobile phone or our smartphone. And then if it suddenly end, uh, suddenly broken or maybe my PC uh, get broken, I'm really stressed. Because I can do <laughs> a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, is there any research that in first of your research? This is this research is about how people, uh, when using robot, how the stress level of of the yeah. But uh, what if they do they use robot and then suddenly the robot is stopped, is broken? <laughs> how much oh. the level of stress of them? Okay, so um, thank you for the question, and I had a look at it, and it is true, and it's correct what you said. Um, so stress levels, um, if you look at the graph, um, you will see in the beginning when you're unfamiliar with robotics, it doesn't matter if you're in a class where you learn to build robotics, or if you've been taught by a robotic, or if you use technology to enhance the, the class. Um, stress levels will increase, and then it will sort of reach a point where everybody is familiar with that, so it's not stressful any longer. Everybody is used to the rob robot or whatever they built or the way it's been taught, and the stress levels will go slightly down or sometimes a lot down. The problem is when it's malfunctioning. Um, the stress levels, not only in higher education, but as well as other industries, as proven in these other research studies that shows malfunctioning is creating a lot of stress because now you're used to your helper, your teammate, yeah. always supporting you, and suddenly yeah. that the, it, it's just dropping you. And then there's a spike in, in the stress levels. So what I would like to do, because this is a current research study I'm busy with, um, I would like to see in future if the, the robot is malfunctioning, or if it's not <laughs> working or supposed to do what it's supposed okay. to do, what will be then the stress levels of the students? But definitely, I think you will find it's increasing because based on my other studies that I've completed so far. Okay. Uh, just like now, okay. there's a chat GPT. Uh, people talking about chat GPT. So what is the in the future, all students always using chat GPT to search for the answer. And then suddenly, uh, chat GPT turn. The server is turned. And everybody gets stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you see, no, 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 yeah, no, this, this topic because uh, now people are really depend on the technology, yes, especially I, I for for you. for their brain. And then, yes. what if it uh, malfunction or and uh, and uh, how about their brain? And is it they smart enough? Just like the older one, or the exactly. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I was, I was actually, I agree with you. I was actually started recently to start investigating Chat GPT because um, I agree with you. I think that people will not be able to construct any papers any longer, um, and uh, that people will get lazy, and then maybe yes, they become more stupid um, in, in a sense like that. However, what I did find was that. 
in chat GPT, when you use it, that it's not giving you references. It is not um, you, even if it's giving you the outline of, of more or less the, the what you're trying to find out, but there's no depth in the material, meaning that there's no, re, there's no research material. There's only lines, nice words, no research studies, no citations, nothing like that. Um, the other thing that I tested, I don't have answers for you at this stage. I'm just telling you what I've tested so far. Um, when you put it for plagiarism through a, to, like turn it in, you put it through a tool like that, um, it will give you a 0% plagiarism rate. Um, yeah. And if you think about it um, in general, um, nobody can ever have a 0% plagiarism rate. If you write a paper yourself, there's yeah. always something, maybe one, two, seven, five, little, a small percentage, but it's not possible to write a 100% plagiarism uh, paper. Maybe if you really concentrate and your focus is that, I wouldn't say not completely, not possible, but highly unlikely that any student without using chat GPT will use it. Um, you'll get the results of zero. So I, I'm also thinking of looking at that because I think it could be a problem for um, universities in future. Um, and um, I actually thought about previous submissions from students uh, where I had a problem, they were never citing to the paper. And when I thought about it, I thought they were using chat GPT. So the English level was fine, very good, but there's no depth, there's no <laughs> research studies. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah. so I think it's a topic we need really to investigate further uh, because like you said, if we don't uh, utilize it in the correct way to help universities, it's going to make people even more stupider. I'm sorry, but this is the reality where we are. Yeah. To. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Thank At you for the answer. useful use for that. Yeah, sure. Mm. Okay. okay. Okay, fine. Okay, Um. yes. And then there's also Sandra. Yes. Yes, Sandra. You want to mention anything, Sandra? Anything you want to mention? And we have still a few minutes for questionnaires, so about 10 minutes. So anything you want to mention? No, no questions. I've dropped my email ID in the chat line. Um, you're welcome to communicate with him. This is an ongoing study and I can always share findings as I progress with my studies. Um, because it's um, it's really interesting to share and get also your opinion from that side. Um, okay. It's really beneficial for all universities if we communicate between each other. So okay. um, please feel free to contact me and I will respond uh, back to your email. Yes. <laughs> okay, any other questions? From our audience, I think it's no. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. Okay. And um, thank you, Navita, um, for the time and this opportunity. And I hope that the students have learned something. And I hope that we can actually collaborate in further studies, maybe discussions, um, how we can move this topic forward, because like we discussed, there's many ways that we can look at this topic. Thank you for Mr. Ponda. Yeah, people okay. can close this event. May we take a picture for documentation? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. For everyone. I will stop. Yeah, I will stop okay. sharing. Please open your camera. We will take a picture. Yeah, bagi para peserta bisa dinyalakan terlebih dahulu untuk kameranya. Okay, I will take uh, one, two, and three. Okay, once again. One, two, three, smile. <laughs> okay, thank you. Finally, we come to the end of visiting lecture today. We would like to, we would like to say thanks for Miss Wanda Group Miller. Is it correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. To uh for the wonderful information and presentation. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. We hope this information will be beneficial for our audience. And I hope we can meet again at another event in the future. Also, I would like sure. to thank for my participants for attending this class today. At least we hope to have more collaboration in the future with the Western Caspian University. The visiting lecture for today and here, we hope to see you soon. Thank you and have a nice day for Mr. Miss Wanda. Okay, bye all. Nice meeting all of you. Okay, thank you. Bye -bye.